Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, hundreds sign up for a new BEC payment plan seeking relief from outstanding electricity bills. The DNA holds its candidates launch tonight, and senators take a critical look at new election legislation. All those stories and more coming up in the Bahamas tonight. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Good evening and welcome to The Bahamas Tonight, The National Report. I'm Kishla Adderley. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news this evening, hundreds of BEC consumers have made agreements with the corporation to have their electricity supply restored while they pay off outstanding bills. Last week, Prime Minister Ingram directed BTC to put such an arrangement in place without imposing reconnection fees. Sayan Thompson tells us just what's being offered to more than 5,000 delinquent consumers. It was last week when Prime Minister Ingram advised that BC will begin a new round of discussions with disconnected consumers. He also announced that the reconnection fees will be waived. Knowing that they don't have to pay to be reconnected is a good thing. It's a good thing. The Bahamian needed. It's a very good thing. I shouldn't be no more than draft from the PM to say as, as it is, the country's down in a, in a crisis. I think that is, it is a political ploy that he's using so close to election. It's just under 5,000 BC customers who remain without electricity, but hundreds responded to have their supply reconnected. Assistant General Manager of Customer Services, Peter Rutherford. There's been about almost 650 persons have come in between last Friday morning and yesterday evening. Uh, who have come in and taken advantage of the payment arrangement. The majority of those would have either been reconnected up to last night or sometime during today. We're averaging roughly about 170 customers per day uh, who are coming in. So that would significantly, significantly impact our volume, the traffic that we're, we're addressing these customers. The mall is quite busy. The head office is quite busy. Out of the thousands of disconnected customers, the majority are New Providence users with the remainder throughout the family islands. A lot of customers may come in and see a long line, but we're processing customers as quickly as we can. We are encouraging all those customers whose supplies are disconnected uh, to come in at this time, um, present their identification to any of our customer services rep. Uh, they can exp um, look at the payment option that is there and make a determination. One of the things that we have been noticing is persons are opting in some instances not to take the full 36 months even though it is extended to them and they're opting to go on a, maybe a 12 month or an 18 month, 18 month arrangement. Uh, certainly um, those, that is the option that is available to the customers. This program is similar to the offer the government introduced in October of 2010. At that time, hundreds responded, but many were unable to remain current, resulting in disconnections. Now, BC has extended its hours to make it easier for customers to get reconnected. Its weekday hours extend to 6.30 p.m. at the Mall at Marathon and until 1 p.m. on Saturdays. Cyan Thompson, ZNS News. Controversy from the Senate today as Senator Dion Fox tabled the WikiLeaks report which revealed what he said was the real reason why an immigration strike was held back in 2005. And it wasn't for administrative reasons as previously reported, he said. According to the confidential report, former Bahamian Consular Chief of Affairs Dorothea Lafleur held a private lunch with the U.S. Embassy's Consular Chief accusing former Minister of Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell of pressuring consular officers to issue visas to ineligible applicants. Lafleur further alleged, according to the document, that Mitchell is involved in a visa scam to bring in large numbers of nationals, Chinese nationals that is, to the Bahamas. According to Lafleur, oh, this recent stuff, now this ain't the lies you all told in Yamakura the other night, this recent stuff, according to Lafleur, 
Mitchell attempted to pressure consular officers to issue the visas and when unsuccessful, attempted to bypass Bahamian consular law and division leadership. In response, staff walked out on strike. You all remember that, when they had that big strike, forcing Mitchell to back down. Lafleur said Mitchell was likely receiving financial kickbacks for the visas that were issued, though she said she had no hard proof of this. Now, according to Minister Folks, here's what the WikiLeaks report also alleged. According to Lafleur, Mitchell directly ordered her to issue visas to 30 Chinese nationals whose applications were sponsored by a member of Parliament, Sidney Stubbs. And in brackets, they have note colon. Sidney Stubbs is a notorious local politician, often accused of corruption, and note full stop, close brackets. Now, the report went on to add that this alleged unlawfulness prom prompted a strike and alleged that Mitchell received a portion of whatever the Chinese nationals paid for their visas. According to the report, Lafleur favored the PLP winning the 2007 election as long as it didn't reappoint Mitchell as foreign affairs minister. Now, the Fox Hill member of Parliament, Fred Mitchell, says he is suing the local diplomat over what he says are defamatory remarks, and it all stems from those controversial WikiLeaks documents. Mr. Mitchell, in a statement released late today, said that he is shocked that in so high a place as the Senate, it could be used to purvey useless, trashy, and untested hearsay information, allegedly from a disgruntled employee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs about him in his capacity as Minister of Foreign Affairs during the 2002 through 2007 PLP administration. Mr. Mitchell says there isn't one scintilla of evidence to suggest any malfeasance by him in public office. In fact, he says the record shows that with regard to both passport issuance and visa issuance, he never issued any visas or passports to anyone or caused such an issuance, but were the issuance was dealt with by the permanent secretary and her staff within the ministry. Furthermore, Mr. Mitchell says as the matter now raised years later by Senator Dion Folks was raised before by then Senator Carl Bethel in 2007 and discredited by a thorough police investigation, a management audit by the Public Service Commission and by the Auditor General with no malfeasance in public office attributed to him. Mr. Mitchell chalks it all up to an attempt to gain political mileage. Meantime, senators began debate today on amendments to the Parliamentary Elections Act. The amendments will allow international observers to view our electoral process, open the voting pool to eligible Bahamians abroad, and give the parliamentary commissioner the power to appoint government officials overseas to carry out election duties. Janea Noel Ferguson has more. Saving time and money is just one of the things the amendments to the Parliamentary Elections Act will allow. According to the Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Senator the Honorable Dion Folks, Bahamians in the U.S., U.K., and participating Caribbean countries will be free of the financial burden associated with traveling home to vote. It is very expensive to families and to students and other qualified persons to buy um, round trip tickets just to come home for a couple of days to participate in a general election. On a practical level, this saves many Bahamian families and many students hundreds the amendments clarify provisions for voting, defines foreign missions, and allows independent observers to analyze our process. Senator Dr. Duane Sands noted that our elections have highlighted concerns of bribery, financing, and registration, but the amendments will take us to another level. He, however, took issue with persons who do not exercise their right to vote. It is an unfortunate view, and in my opinion, perhaps suggests a lack of interest in the welfare, a lack of concern for the deepening of democracy. How is it that an adult Bahamian with the opportunity to make a difference in their country would seek not to cast a vote to determine the outcome 
of governance in this country. Meanwhile, leader of the opposition in the Senate, Senator Allison Maynard Gibson, was in support of the amendments. She said she hopes that for the upcoming elections, all rules are followed. The rules that govern the manner in which the poll will be conducted overseas be published so that all voters, most importantly, and also the political parties and their workers will understand how the polls abroad will be conducted. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS News. Meantime, in the Senate today, Senator Allison Maynard Gibson responded to statements made by Senator Dwayne Sands, chairman of the Bahamas Mortgage Corporation. During the last Senate session, Sands claimed that 822 low- and middle-income Bahamians were overcharged by the corporation to the tune of some $2.6 million. The government senator also alleged gross mismanagement of funds and said that some $1.8 million was missing from the mortgage corporation's account. Maynard Gibson, however, said that no wrongdoing was ever proven. There were cost overruns, which is, said, which is stated in the letter, and those cost overruns were paid for by the Ministry of Housing. And in the letter of 2005, here is the Ministry of Housing asking the Bahamas Mortgage Corporation, pursuant to a government policy that was implemented by the FNM, to please pay back the money, reimburse the Ministry of Housing. Nothing untoward, nothing sinister, no evidence of mismanagement at all. The Progressive Liberal Party says the government has failed and has done miserably as it relates to crime in the country. During a press conference at the Hilton Hotel this morning, Deputy Leader of the PLP, Philip Brave Davis, outlined the opposition's agenda to address crime should the party be elected the next government of the Bahamas. Here's Carla Palmer. Crime is a national crisis, and according to Deputy Leader of the Progressive Liberal Party, Philip Davis, the crime bills, which won opposition approval last year, were much too little too late. The Member of Parliament for Cat Island, Rumkey and San Salvador, claims that the next PLP government will met out swift justice, which he claims the government is failing to do. Crime may be a complex issue, but a government with the right priorities and the right policies can make huge inroads against crime and violence. The Bahamas needs swift justice. The PLP will reinstate the program. And for those already out on bail, we are proposing a dramatic increase in surveillance. We will bring back programs which, are, which were working, like witness protection and school policing. And we have many new and innovative measures as well including Operation Ceasefire, with a focus on repeat offenders. And there's more. Saturation patrols in crime hotspots and direct intervention in the cycle of revenge killings with new outreach workers trained in conflict mediation. At an earlier press conference, PLP Senator Jerome Fitzgerald aired similar concerns. In particular, he says the PLP is committed to the creation of a special unit for death penalty sentences so that death penalty appeals are fast-tracked. Davis claims the PLP is the only party with the expertise and intent to implement Urban Renewal 2.0. And that too, he says, will be reinstated should the PLP win the government. Carla Palmer, ZNS News. The Democratic National Alliance, DNA, is set to address the Bahamian electorate at its summit tonight at the Wyndham Resort and Crystal Palace Casino. Like the Free National Movement and Progressive Liberal Party before it, the DNA will introduce its 38 candidates for the upcoming general election. There's a live shot from that event set for tonight. Now, the highlight is the announcement of the party's deputy leader following elections this past Monday. The deputy leader will address the summit along with DNA leader Branville McCormick. Cartney. Well, still to come in the Bahamas tonight, disaster preparedness, the focus of a conference underway here in the capital. That story and more after the break. <laughs>